This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. A very good morning to you and welcome back into the conversation. It is still now breakfast on Radio Now 95.3 FM Lagos. But we turn our sights from this, from all that we've spoken about so far, to bring you our update of uh, matters in the legislative chambers. Keeping up with the National Assembly is where we are this morning. And our conversation is with our friends over at Order Paper. We're speaking with Mr. Daniel Oputa this morning morning uh mr Oputa, good morning and thank you for joining us on the conversation pardon us that's mr david, david Oputa. Oputa Let, let's dive right into it right um i mean we've got the national assembly getting into full swing and you yourself have noted some of the things that are up for discussion including an amendment to the electoral act uh we're also looking at stiffer penalties for kidnappers these are some of the things that you've raised so let's let's dive into it and speak to us about the highlights of the week Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to Nigerians. Uh, yesterday was a great day to be a Nigerian. And yeah, um, the National Assembly, I think the biggest uh, issue this week is the amendment to the Electoral Act, just like you have mentioned, amongst other bills and motions and the actions that uh, have been taken already. But so far, so good this week, uh, this amendment to the Electoral Act coming on the heels of uh, the 20, the last election that I held last year, you know. So there are about five things that uh, the sponsor of this uh, amendment is pushing for, you know. Uh, and so the first thing is that uh, INEC have to carry out a re-registration exercise for all eligible voters in the pressure for the next elections every 10 years. So the way it happens now is... Uh, when the election is to happen, they just update the voter registration. But this guy is saying now you have to do the whole process again every 10 years. Uh, well, uh, people have said that the INEC register is not usually updated. So I think uh, this is his own solution to that problem. And then the second part, uh, another amendment is that uh, the presidential election, national assembly election, state assembly election, and gubernatorial elections are to be held on the same day. These elections will be conducted on the same day. Before now, uh, you would have the presidential and the national elections first, and then a fortnight, you now have the states and gubernatorial elections. But now, uh, this lawmaker wants everything to be conducted on the same day. Is this feasible? Is this uh, a better solution to what is already existing, well, uh, it's left for the House to decide what they think. And then another thought uh, amendment is uh, card reader, the issue of the card reader. You know, so in the last elections, people were accredited even when the card reader did not pick them up. But this time around, this lawmaker is saying that when people want to vote, you come with your um, INEC uh, the voters registration card, and then the card reader has to read it. If the card reader is unable to read it, you are not eligible to vote. Let me read specifically where it says, where the process of accreditation specified in subsection two above fails, such a voter is automatically disqualified from voting. That is to say, no accreditation, no voting. Now I know definitely that this will not fly. This will raise lots of um, issues, especially in the northern part of the country and many areas where there seem to be uh, uh, um, network issues, you know. So if the card reader does not read my card, why don't you go ahead with the manual? Although he's arguing that using that manual process allows rigging, you know, people who have, that's where people who have died, people who mm -hmm. are unable to come to vote by themselves that's where they you know wriggle them in and then cast votes for them but card reader accreditation or nothing i think this one will be highly debatable you were going to say something so, so put a, yeah I, I want to draw on just your uh time observing the national assembly right the electoral act typically has quite a few amendments that are sponsored by different lawmakers and typically they're all at the same time some of them will be at different levels this one scaled second reading i believe there's still the hurdle to cross about whether the president will sign it or not if at all we see both chambers agree to these 
these amendments. So that's actually what I want to get from you. You, What you think are the chances of the bill as is, the proposed amendment as it is, because you've only mentioned your thoughts on just one of those, one, one clause within it. So what are your thoughts on whether it will scale through completely? So I think, uh, yeah, just like you said, this is the second reading. It's still going to go to a committee stage before coming back to the House of uh, the Committee of the Vote. I think that when it gets to the committee stage, some parts of uh, this amendment will be edited or removed, especially the part of this uh, no accreditation, no voting. I am sure it will not fly. You know, some other parts of the amendments uh, uh, collapsing the elections into one day and all that. Uh, in fact, even says that uh, a huge penalty for those who bring frivolous uh, uh, petitions to the electoral courts. You know, that could fly. But the, as it is, the amendment as proposed by the Honorable uh, Wave, I'm not sure everything everything will fly, especially the no accreditation, no voting. By the time it gets to committee of all, all the other lawmakers are going to tear that part to pieces, I can tell you. And then that part will either be removed or edited or left as it's as it was. And then mm-hmm. um by the time it gets to the president, I'm sure the the, the house as it is right now and uh, the executive, they have very perfect synergy. Remember that the chief of staff to the president used to be the speaker of the uh, House of Assembly. So there's that right. perfect synergy. Yeah. Well, Mr. Oputa, what are the important motions are we can we take note of from this week's plenary? Um, so uh, the Senate, uh, so so far this week, it's been uh, all motions of urgent importance, motions of urgent importance. But from the Senate, I think they were looking at uh, on the second reading, a bill for the establishment of a NYC trust fund that has been a pressing issue for, for a while. You know, NYC coppers have always complained about a delay in salary, and then there's been that issue of how to fund that uh, service. And so now there's a motion on the second reading that for the establishment of an NYC trust fund, whereby uh, I think 0.1% of government revenue will just be uh allocated to the nyc and so the funding issues of nyc will be solved i think that's a motion that uh, because people have also called for the scrapping of nyc and now this is a motion that says that seeks to establish the workings of the nyc so there's going to be lots of uh, uh interventions left and right on this particular motion on this particular uh, motion bill yeah but it's in the second reading and the senate um, I saw something also on the Child Rights Act. Um, that's on his first reading. So, so far, mm. uh, there's been lots of abuses of children. There's a case uh, somewhere in the southeast of a woman who used the um, iron and all of that on the child. And so the Senate is picking that up to amend that uh, because it looks like uh, Nigerians don't get that there's something like child rights. So that bill is going to put on stiffer penalties for abuses on children. I think those are right. those are some of the most critical bills and motions this week. Mr. Oputa, thank you very much for giving us these updates from our legislative houses. Our guest on the conversation this morning is Mr. Daniel Oputa of Order Paper. He was giving us an update on the important motions to take note of, as well as uh, some of the conversations that have been had in the Green and Red Chambers. Keeping up with the National Assembly returns next week at this time on your Beyond the News station, Radio Now 95.3 FM. Do stay with us as up next is the News Review. This is... Radio Now 95.3 FM.